Omar Lutfi here with Lutfi Innovations, and today I'm going to be installing a curb energy monitor. Okay, we're going to start out with a quick unboxing segment here. This is all the cardboard that it came in, so it's packaged very well. And here is all the components. And here is the paperwork that comes with it. Okay, the first step is to install the energy monitor uh, wireless system. It needs to plug into your uh, local area network and this goes into a plug. So this setup should be pretty straightforward. Let's just come back here. Plug that into the, the router. And oh, of course, this isn't gonna fit. Oh, maybe it will. Plug that into here. Got a bunch of green lights, so that sounds like a good thing. Okay, now I am verifying which circuit the wireless curb was on, so I'm going to, I believe it is 24, so I'm going to turn that off and go downstairs and verify that the, that the, what I just plugged in is powered off. Okay, so through a little bit of trial and error, I found that my router was hooked up to circuit number 9, which was conveniently labeled garage and outside outlets, instead of you know, something like, oh, the basement, but I figured it out, and uh, so it looks like we're on to the next step. All right, one last uh, note on installing the wireless is that the user guide recommends that you plug it directly into the outlet and not into a power strip, because that'll, I don't know, mess up the, the wireless signal. So just FYI. Okay, so the next step is going to be taking off the cover of the circuit breaker panel and starting to install the clips. And I'm a little uh, apprehensive about this section and I've considered hiring an electrician for this, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So um, if you're gonna give up, I think this is a good step to not go any further if you really don't know what you're doing. And I just sort of know what I'm doing, which I think is more dangerous, but, uh, I'm gonna try and see what happens. Okay, so this is one section that I think they really glossed over in the uh, installation manual about setting up your A's and B's. So what I did was I got my multimeter and I set it to 750 alternating current and I put one probe up here and I stick the other one on this screw here. And if you set it on the A side, it'll show zero, and then when you move it to the B side, it shows about 240, 246 volts. So on the next one, I set it over to the A side, and it shows 246, and on the B side, it shows zero. So this is an A, and this one's a B. You can see zero, 246 and I just went through all of them and labeled them and apparently they all end up alternating but I checked all of them uh, this is one thing that I was kind of nervous about but I just made sure I didn't touch any wires and it all went pretty well so all right so here's the next step of hooking up the power and what I did I think this is another section they kind of glossed over so let's see if I can get this to focus right so here's the connector and I hooked up the neutral wire first up to the neutral wire section. And then I turned off these two circuits and I hooked the orange one up to the curb one and the next one. So what I did was after I turned them off, I came in here and stuck the wire in and tightened it back up and made sure both of them were um, 
were tight and both the um, connections were good. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, I think that's a good way to do it. Um, I could be wrong, but that's what I did and I'm still here. So, um, so that's the next step. Okay, so now I've got the power to the curb unit and I've hooked up the two clamps to the main A and B side and this is what it looks like and it looks like on my computer I'm getting some some good data so I think I'm just going to hook up all of the other clamps and then go back and and show you what it looks like on the computer and probably edit out all the hours of frustration that I'll get somewhere along the line. All right. <coughs> so here is my first attempt at putting the clamps on. So what I did was I put the, the big clamps on the A and B that go to the main circuit. And then I took two of the medium sized ones and hooked that up to the dryer. And on the other side, let's see, these two go to the range and I ended up, let's see if I can get those down here. They just wouldn't fit up at the top. So I hooked the two medium, two mediums up to the dryer, two mediums up to the range. And for the rest of the small ones, I just, kind of prioritize which um, which circuits I think will be drawing the most power and over on this side here and then there's a couple that I left blank and uh, we'll figure that out I might rearrange it later and I just have all the wires dangling down and I'm gonna try and zip tie them and eventually they'll go up into that uh, those little green connectors and then back up into the curb. Okay, here is what it looks like after I've installed everything. I tried to zip tie the wires together as nicely as I could, but uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be the exact final arrangement, so I don't want to cut any wires. So um, everything looks pretty good, and I'm going to see how hooking it up on online goes so that'll be my next segment okay it's been two weeks since i've installed my energy monitor and here's some thoughts on the subject my first thing is is this a do-it-yourself project and i think maybe but i got it all done and i'm not an electrician but I followed all the directions and there wasn't any big surprises. So I would say, yeah, I mean, I got it done. And um, the second thing that I'd like to talk about is um, things I would have done differently. Um, the first thing is the numbers and the stickers I thought were too confusing. Um, I just used the circuits, the numbers on the circuits and checking everything for the A and B. Um, the only thing it really mattered for was uh, connecting the power to the curb box. Everything after that, it really doesn't matter. Um, the only thing that I found confusing as far as the instructions go were if you have a circuit like the dryer that takes up two of, if it takes up two spots, you only need to hook up one of the clamps to it and then you can go in on the website and say this takes up two spots and then the software just uh, compensates for that. So that's the only thing I would have done differently. Uh, the only other thing I would have probably picked which circuits I wanted before I even started and uh, just tested it out. I mean, there's the big ones that you know about, but after that, then there's smaller ones and you kind of like, I don't know. And there's obviously going to be some circuits in your house that really don't draw any power, like um, my bedroom lights. And uh, there's several that just don't use up hardly any energy. So 
um, pick those, I would say before you even start the project is to de decide which circuits to use. Um, other than that, the software, I mean, the hardware was what they advertised. There wasn't any big surprises. I followed the directions and everything worked well. And um, I'll probably do another video on um, the software side of this. But as far as the hardware goes, this is definitely a do-it-yourself project. And I think uh, the makers of Curb probably could market it a little bit better to say, yeah, if you're willing to take off the cover of your circuit breaker and put some clamps in, then you should be okay. So, um, so that about wraps it up. The hardware, I think overall it was a big, it was a medium sized project and, um, you know, that's just how it's going to be, but I'm getting some really good data and I think it was worth it. So, um, is it worth the money? You know, I don't know. That's up to you. Uh, but I think I'm getting some really good data and I can, get some good real-time information about what I'm doing, so I am happy with what I got. And that's about it for this video. Thank you.